¿De qué lado lo presenta? Ah, sí, yo... ah, ahí está, ¿no? Es el micrófono ambiental. Ajá, y el video es este. Lo puede sí. ser un poco más... Lo puedo hacer así, para que... Es un poco más... Ahí. ¿Está? Sí, me perfecto. Es que no me hago nada. ¿Así? Sí. Ok. Listo. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me all, everything well? Yes, we can. Okay, so hi everyone. My name is Jonathan Mesa. I'm coming from Newark Electronics, and I'm glad to introduce you to Jesus Rodriguez, who is going to make a presentation about electro and automatics AC to DC trends. So, Jesus. Thank you. Thank Go you ahead. for sharing this invitation to this event. So, can you hear me well? Yeah. Yes. I'm not sure if, if, if you can catch yes, it because it's a microphone. So thank you, thank you for hearing the at the room. They cannot hear you well. Uh, okay, I will try to speak louder. Okay, my name is Jesus Rodriguez. I'm working for Tektronics, and part of the, 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 the idea for this conversation is to talk about the AC to DC trends. What we have seen on the on the last months, I would say maybe. I, I was thinking to say years, but uh, we have seen much more in the in the last months. So we have seen this this uh, transition to electrification, and what electrification means is this conversion from AC to DC. The best way to describe this is electronic cars, maybe electrical cars. The use of batteries, the way to create energy from solar panels or or other sources, but at the end, the, this cap capability to absorb energy and to use DC instead of AC. So to talk about this, I just want to to share a a, a little overview about Tektronics. So Tektronics, a uh, both. This started with this year with a new company that is Electroautomatic. Electroautomatic is now part of Tektronics. So Tektronics is like more, more focused on time domain, frequency domain. It would be oscilloscopes, spectrum analyzers, signal generators, and some others. When you are using an oscilloscope, is particularly to measure inside a circuit. So typically is to do measurements inside the PCB. And the idea for an oscilloscope is to validate the signal integration. Signal integration is how clear is the signal? If there are some noises, what's the, the reason for that noise? Then Kidley, all of those companies are going to be part of Tektronix, but Tektronix is time domain, frequency domain. Kidney is going to be like more for, for DC than around uh, ohm low, so voltage, current, and resistance. So there you will find like multimeters, power sources, uh, electronic loads, and some others, more to characterize voltage, current, uh, resistance. And the new one is electroautomatic. Electroautomatic. It would be power supplies, bidirectional power supplies. Now I will explain explain better what those, that means. And, and electronic loads, regenerative electronic loads. So the idea for those devices is if you want to test a DC to DC converter, a driver, a battery in high power, then you will be using the electroautomatic tools. So let's try to talk uh, deeper about the, the use of these uh, new, new platforms and what's the reason for that, OK? So what we, oh, sorry for that. 
So what's going to be like the trends, okay? The trends is that the majority of the electronic devices that we will be using in your house will move to DC connection, okay? So when we are using electronic devices in your house, maybe, uh, well, today we are using the, the AC uh, outlet to do the connection. You will connect your cable, but at the end, your device will do a conversion from AC to DC. Then what about doing a DC connection? As you do when you are like riding your car, you connect your, your, your mobile phone there or your tablet or whatever electronic that you are using, you will try to connect that device to the 12 volts DC uh, connector there in your car. So the, the, the trend is that all the, the devices connected on your house uh, will, will be connected on DC. Okay, so the idea is that even in a factory, you will see that. Okay, what's the conflict? What we have seen in the in Thompson. So what we have uh, seen in the in the last years is these changes on the environment. No, these uh, these 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 conflicts about the temperature. The temperature is getting higher. Then we have seen like those catastrophic events that are like affecting our world. On that demand, uh, the industry is doing some investments on working to reduce the, the, the emissions of, of carbon. To do that, we have seen like some industries working to do those improvements. And the idea is to try to generate lower uh, effects uh, that that could create those those uh, contaminants there okay so what we can use to try to improve this is try to use renewable uh, sources of, of energy okay on that way take a look at this this is like how are we facing this installation for new uh, devices uh, creating er energy for example uh, in the in the 2050s no the idea is that the main contributors could be solar uh, panels, as an example, other that will use the wind to try to generate some uh, energy, no? to create the electrification from those type of sources. Instead of gas, instead of other materials, no? the idea is that you can use renewable uh, power sources. Saying that, uh, the, the trend is also based in the industries. The ones that are like working deeper on this are going to be the power industry, the energy industry, no? And there are some some models like aviation, shipping, roads, the commercials. Okay, so uh, there are some big contributors, but at the end, all of us are going to be part of this. So, as I said when we started. Maybe the, the best way to see that locally could be the use of the solar uh, panels in your house, or maybe the electrical vehicles, and then the use of, of batteries. Then the, the idea is that the, the power source could also create energy. For example, you can try to create some ammonia, and then that ammonia could be shipped, no? to other countries through the ocean, or maybe you can try to collect through solar panels and then try to separate the hydrogen or nitrogen and try to create a ammonia, no? And at the end, your city is gonna get a sourced by, by electrical energy from other sources, no? So at the end, for example, we are talking about those electrical vehicles, and we are thinking on how to charge the how to charge the battery of that car. But also, your car can be the source of the energy to your house. So when the car gets back to to the to your house, maybe this one can be the one that can uh, generate the power that your house will demand. So at the end, the idea of this electrical uh, vehicle 
maybe it, it could be uh, an energy that can be supporting all the devices inside your house. So that means that the, that the direction of the uh, current could be to the car or from the car to your house. In terms of, uh, if, if we try to talk about uh, a, a power supply, that's, that means that the direction of the current would be bidirectional. So the current could be to supply the energy to, to the house or to supply the energy to the vehicle. All, all depends on, on your environment, okay? So saying that, we need, we have this demand to measure different type of devices. It's not just about creating uh, re renewable sources. Uh, also, it's about the efficiency on the devices that you are using. You know? If we try to talk, for example, in the electrical vehicles, the electrical vehicles will do several uh, uh, manipulation on, on, on in the energy that, that is getting on, on that vehicle, as an example. Uh, the, the low power uh, sources for the vehicles use to deliver AC signal to the car. Inside the car, there is an AC to DC converter, okay? And then from the inside the car, there is a transition from 400 volts to 800 volts to, to charge the battery. But if you think on, on the on the electrical connection that you have there in the car, maybe you you need a, a an outlet that could be 12 volts, 24 volts, 48 volts, no? So there are like different uh, inverters that you will find inside the vehicle, okay? But the, the new uh, chargers, uh, we have we have seen these trends to have like high speed chargers for the cars. So instead of connect an AC lock to your vehicle, you will do a DC connection there to your to your vehicle. And the signal, well, the, the, the power uh, that needs to get there connected, it's going to be a DC source working up to 800 volts, OK? So instead of AC connection, it's going to be a DC, OK? Then if you have inside the vehicle not just one, more than that inverters, you need to verify that they have good efficiency because when you are working on this uh, conversion, maybe you are losing some energy. And the idea is to try to make it better, more efficiency. There are also some regulations saying that the quality, the percentage of, the percentage of losses doesn't need to exceed so certain values. Okay? Okay. So, if we describe like those market segments working on, on these green sources of energy, no, we have this, this description on what, what is happening on, on, on this market, okay, in our world. So we have seen the sources of renewable energy, the way to storage energy, okay? It's not just about creating the energy. If you have a, a solar panel, you need to have in your house a, a battery, maybe, no? Or you can deliver to the to the grid, and then you will get some improvements on your payments. But if don't, maybe if you have a if you have a solar array, you can do you can you can make the conversion, or you can have like a, a energy storage, a battery, taking on all that energy, no, to use it uh, later on, on that day. Also, the mobility, no, the vehicle cars, is not just about uh, cars for consume. Also, it could be in a truck, no, components, hydrogen, and also we have like other trends. For example, the use of of the batteries after their their working life, no. What I want to say is, if you want to recover your battery, you need to recycle the battery. And what does that mean? You need to discharge the batteries. You need to verify which are like the ones that are still working. And maybe some of them can be used for other applications, no? If at the end there are some others that, that should be working, no? Uh, you, can, you can try to, to identify 
which are on, on, on a package that has several batteries, which are like the ones with some failures, maybe to try to separate like all those materials, but the others that are still working to try to give like a second life to, to those batteries. If we describe, for example, what is happening inside a, a massive uh, transporter as a bus, no? in a bus, in a bus, the the power that maybe will uh, will with the mando system could reach up to 100 kilowatts, while a, a a vehicle, no, a car that you are using, maybe the battery is gonna be. 3 kilowatts, no, in a bus could be 100 kilowatts up to 300 kilowatts. Okay. Okay. So let's try to describe like the different devices that can uh, be part of a uh, entire system. No, we have we have described it like some charging systems. No, as as I said previously. No, this one in a low speed charger will deliver. AC, an AC signal, okay, AC signal. And the new ones for fast charge is gonna be a DC uh, connector delivering 800 volts, okay? Then battery cells, uh, batteries for, for vehicles, no? Drivers, inverters, uh, and some others. So the question is, how can we validate if they are working correctly, no? It's not just about the, the, the validation of in a, in a functional validation. No, you need to try to test them. You need to stress them. So the question is how to do that. OK, so let's try to describe this. Um, if there are any questions, please let me know. OK. So Electroautomatic is a company that has already started 50 years ago. It's a company uh, from Germany. And the type of devices that, that they will deliver are those uh, power sources described on, on, on that picture. Okay. Um, just as a quick description, description for Electroautomatic. It's a company that started in Germany with some uh, offices now in Mexico, but also if we try to describe like the service centers they have in Troy. And also in San Diego, okay. But what are the type of instrument that they that they will offer to try to test those high power devices, are the inverters, the batteries, and some others? No. Those could be power supplies, bidirectional power supplies, electronic loads. Okay, those are like the type of devices. If we try to talk about a power supply. It's going to be a simple concept. The, the, the concept is going to be simple because it's just the, the power delivery, okay, in DC, just in DC. So the typical question that we are going to do, that we, that we will do to, to set like the type of device, or to, to choose the type of device, is which is the power, which is the voltage and current that, you, that your device will demand, okay? So maybe one is going to say, okay, I need to, to supply energy to my device, maybe 200 volts, 10 amps, no? So the combination, the, it's going to be like the power, okay? That's the way to choose the correct power supply. As you can see, the power range can reach up to 2,000 volts, okay? In current up to 1,000 amperes. And we can do system that can reach up to 60, kilowatts but at the end if you want to create like a system you can do that then if you create like a system you can do a megawatt systems okay but what about the by directional uh, power supply the by directional power supply can do two activities to supply the energy or to absorb the energy so when do we need to use a bidirectional power supply? As an example, if you want to test a battery, you need to charge the battery and discharge the battery. Okay? So in the first step, the instrument, the bidirectional power supply, is going to act 
as a power supply to charge the battery. Okay, but if you want to discharge the platform, it's going to work as a electronic load. Then the instrument will absorb the energy, and then all that energy is going to be regenerative in the platform. What does that mean? If the instrument is can, can be a regen, regenerative bidirectional power supplies, that means that if you discharge a battery, that energy is going to be returned to your AC to, to your AC connection, okay, to your network, to your grid. So at the end, the 90% of the energy that has been uh, recovered from the battery. Instead of delivering by head or something like that, no. Instead of that, you will recover and, and, and get it back connected to your grid. So at the end, you will uh, you will absorb the energy from the battery, and you will regenerate regenerate that energy to to your uh, to your grid. So at the end, the ones that will consume that energy that has been re recovered. Could be your computers, your TVs, all the electronic devices there on your network, or maybe you can return to the grid that it's outside your 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 building. Okay, is it clear this concept? Yep. Okay. So at the end, we can be working with a uh, single power supply with an electronic load, or this concept of bidirectional power supply that can be also focus to regenerate that energy no, to get connected back to, to your grid, okay? So that, that's the idea, okay? So what's gonna be like the trend on the industry? The devices needs to, to be tested. In Mexico, we have like several participants on this, no? We have some participants doing drivers, drying, uh, doing doing some research or some designs for the drivers, for the motor controllers, for the uh, controllers for the EMS. Those are like the battery managed systems. Also, the manufacturing of, of batteries. No, we have like several participants uh, locally in Mexico working on that. Okay, so it doesn't matter if you need to do a design. You need to use those type of platforms, okay? Or it doesn't matter if that's like a company doing the assembly or the manufacturing of those, those devices. Because at the end, you need to validate that all the connections are, are working properly, okay? Then you need to use this type of instruments to validate the correct uh, functionality of those systems, okay? Um, another part of those trends, for example, we used to receive here in Mexico the batteries that used to be manufactured in other countries. But nowadays, the idea is that the, the, the single batteries can be shipped to, to Mexico, no? And then uh, the, the manufacturing sites will build the entire battery system, no? And they need to validate that all the connections are working correctly, that the single batteries work correctly, no? Otherwise, to improve the manufacturing process, okay, or to uh, repair or, or to separate some some of the components that maybe can can cause like uh, some some failures, okay. So, if we describe like the type of platforms, how to choose those platforms, okay? As you can see, uh, the difference between those instruments is going to be the power on the on the on the power supply or the electronic load or the bidirectional power supply. Take a look at this power. No, the the this unit, the first one, is gonna work up to three kilowatts. But there are some others, fifteen kilowatts, thirty kilowatts, sixty kilowatts. Okay, and then if we uh, look to this. Uh, Product numbers, okay. As an example, on this on this area, no, it says I can reach up to sixty kilowatts, and to get on this area, 
I'm gonna be working up to 900 volts in 250 amps. If at the end, this user wants maybe to start with a 10 kilowatts, they can build like a system, no? Placing like two units, three units to extend the range. If that user wants to start in 10 kilowatts later, they can use the, the parallel connection, okay? To, to grow like the system to reach 30 or 60 kilowatts, okay? That's gonna be the idea. Um, it's important to mention the type of connection uh, to, the, to the AC input, okay? When we need to work up to three kilowatts, it's gonna be one phase, but if you work in a 30, 60 kilowatts, it's gonna be a three phase uh, power connection in the AC outlet, okay? Okay, mm, just as a recommendation, uh, it's gonna be cheaper if you start with a system that can reach like the max power, but if you want to go one step by, by, by step, you can uh, build your system as you need. So why should I need to grow the power? For example, if you want to discharge a battery, okay, uh, it's going to be better if you have the capability to absorb more, more current, no? Then you will charge or discharge faster if you have like, like a system with, with much more power. That, that's going to be the idea, okay? Um, we can also try to describe those type of, of systems as uh, more oriented to the application. For example, some users will be asking for a simulator of a solar panel. The power supply can be uh, configured as a, as a solar panel. So we can, we can uh, place there in the instrument how is the wood for that device, no? Which is like the ISC, the, SOC, the VOC max power, no? So we can set like all those parameters to simulate a solar panel. Or we can simulate the charge, as an example, the battery. We can, we can simulate a battery saying, well, uh, the capabilities of the battery is this. Instead of using a real one, we can say, hey, try to simulate a battery uh, and try to simulate that you are like fully loaded or maybe that you are up to the 10%. You can do that using those platforms, okay? And when we go on this way, the, the name of the instrument can change. As an example, there is a battery tester, but it looks as the previous ones. No, but at the end, if, if the instrument is a battery tester, at the end, it's a power supply and an electronic load, okay? Um, you can create systems, no? And this is how the system is uh, will be. No, maybe you can you can see like uh, four power supplies inside this rack. They get to have several of those. Maybe is the reason is you are trying to test uh, an inverter or a DC to DC converter. So if you want to test a DC to DC converter, you need to supply a voltage in the entrance, no? And then on the other side, you need to absorb. So one is gonna act as a power supply and the, and the other is going to act as an electronic load. But if you are testing a battery, maybe you are making a connection of four systems and the idea is to reach much more power, no? Each of those working up to 10 kilowatts, as an example, you follow them to reach the, the 40. Uh, kilowatts. That, that's going to be the idea to create like a system, no? Just in a single system, okay? Just in a single system, you can have like 300 kilowatts in one rack, okay? So the, 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 the use of those spaces, no? It's also about trying to be, to be more, more, more efficient, no? And if we are recovering the, the energy from a battery, no? That means that the instrument is not going to generate a lot of, of heat. No, it's not 
it, it's not going to be ahead of in, in, your, in your building, no. The idea of this platform will absorb, will deliver all the energy, will recover the energy to the AC plug, plug and, and you, need, you don't need to, to have a special uh, air condition to, conditioner no, to, to try to improve your, your environment, no? Some recommendations, if you want to create like a complete system, uh, EA can deliver this one and it can try to, to make more much more simple like all those connections, no? Okay. Um, there, there are some, some uh, conditions that can help you on the selection of those platforms. And, and we are going to describe the uh, auto ranging. The auto ranging is at the end, the platform is going to be, in this case, 50 kilowatts, okay? And maybe you have like some, no some numbers about the max voltage, the max current, but at the end, the system has a power. So you can increase the value of the voltage, reducing the, reducing the current to, at the end, be working up to the 30 kilowatts, no? So you can, there are some other brands that maybe they, they, will, they will be saying, hey, I'm going to work up to 60 amps, to 500 volts, just in a square area. But instead of that, EA will be saying, no, I can, I, I'm going to give you like all the range. So, so use all, all this, this area, no? So what about the regenerative uh, efficiency? The, by directional power supply will absorb the energy coming from the battery. And that energy, okay, is going to be submitted again to the AC plug. The idea is that you, you will recover the 96% of the energy that is coming from the battery, okay? Uh, and, and why do I need to recover and regen regenerate that energy to the to the grid, no? The first point is to avoid the extra air conditioning, no? To avoid those excessive heads inside your building, no? But the other reason is at the end you will recover the energy, okay? So you will reduce how much do you expend, no? By by charging and discharging this this battery. So there are also some cal calculators inside the EA website, and the system will be ask asking you, uh, how many times are you going to be using the power supply? Which are like the conditions for the your system that you want to test? No, and at the end it will give you the description on how long how long will it take to recover the the money that you pay for that platform. Okay, so big power in just one rack is going to be. 300 kilowatts, okay? Let's try to move in some practical examples, okay? And let, let's move to that point. So when we're talking about the electrical vehicles, okay, um, there are different steps inside the vehicle, different parts inside the vehicle. It's not just the, the charger, and the battery. There are much more inside there, okay? So if we try to describe like all the system, no? Inside the system, uh, as you can see, on the, the, the first uh, generation of the electrical vehicles uh, was an AC connector to deliver AC, okay? And then inside the, the car, it's an OBC. This is a, a onboard charger. The onboard charger, the activity of this guy is to do the conversion from AC to DC. Typically, the conversion is gonna be from AC to DC. The value in DC is gonna be 400 and up to 800 volts, okay? 400 up to 800 volts. And then, there should be a, an inverter in between, okay? Before the battery, uh, that's gonna, the, the name of that device is gonna be the booster. 
the booster, it will be a DC to DC converter to submit the energy to the battery. The battery needs to be uh, needs to receive 800 volts. So the DC to DC converter in between the OBC and the and the battery, it's gonna be to convert from 400 to 800 or 800 to 800 at the end. Okay. So then there would be the battery management system and then the battery. The battery obviously will try to create the energy to the motor, but also to the other devices. No. Then in your car, you have like those connectors. It could be an AC connector for your mobile or your computer to charge your, your devices. But there are also DCs, no? 12 volts, 24 volts, no? There are different types of, 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 of conversions there. So it's not just one inverter. There could be like different types of. Then you need to validate like how is working each of those uh, participants. So typically when we try to use the, the power supply or the electronic load or the bidirectional power supply, the idea is that you need to place an instrument to the right and to the left, no? In, at each point of the ports of your device. If you have a, an inverter, no? Then it means that you have like Two, two connections, no? And the, the field one is, it's a, a, a it's an inverter, no? On this, on, on this side, you need to place an AC source, and on this other, you need to place an electronic load in DC. If it is a DC to DC converter, then you need to connect a power supply in DC, and on the other side, it could be an electronic load. If the system needs a battery, no, to the battery, it needs to be a bidirectional power supply to charge and discharge the battery. So at the end, you need to think on which are like the connections on your device, and you need to place the instrument that will simulate the others, that will simulate and that will act as the others, okay? The idea is not to use a real system because maybe that real system will have some, some issues. So the idea is to try to simulate in a better conditions. That's it. That's the reason why we are, we need to use some testing devices, okay? So some platforms to to measure and to validate the correct functionality of, of each of those uh, components, okay? So the inverter, the motor, the BMS. How do I need to test them with some products as the ones that I mentioned? But let's try to des describe like the, the the system connection, okay? So uh, on this case, the, inver the inverter, how, how do we need to test the inverter, okay? If the instrument, the, the inverter could, could be uh, uh, AC to DC or also a DC to DC converter could be there on your system. Now, in this case, it's an inverter. That means, okay, that the inverter can receive the energy, no, from the AC plug. Okay, and if, if this one is a, let, let's try to think on, on I, I don't want to confuse you. Let me try to use, uh, let, let's continue there. If this is an inverter, no, to source the energy, okay, we need to use a DC source or an AC source to deliver the energy to this device. And we need to validate that this one is working uh, correctly. So on the other side, maybe this one can be a real component of, of your network. It could be the motor, or can be a device doing the simulation, the simulation for, for that motor. Okay. So this, this instrument, the, the DC power supply will deliver DC power, but it needs to get connected to the AC output. Okay. It will do the conversion AC to DC. And this source is going to be very um, efficient, okay? With no, without noise, okay? With a pure uh, value. By the way, this, this power supply is not just delivering 
12 volts, 800 volts, 400 volts, you can also try to simulate different type of events. If you want to do like an stairs of voltages, you can do that. As an example, please start with 400 volts, then go higher and get up to 600 and then 800 for try to do an arbitrary signal, okay? So try to create like a sine waveform, no? And then try to do another thing. You can draw as whatever you need, no? Uh, the, 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 how how the, the signal needs to look like, okay? So it's not just a, a single band. The difference between this type of uh, arbitrary generator inside a power supply is power supply or intelligent power supply. The intelligent power supply, supply is the one that can do that, no? In the solar panel, you can simulate a, a solar panel, giving like the curve, and the instrument will simulate that condition, okay? Next one. This is a battery management system. The battery management system, typically, it needs to receive 800 volts. So before this step, no, we have the onboard charger, then the, the inverter, then the battery management system, and at the end, the battery. So how do we test the battery management system? If we don't have, if, if we want to do like a system validation, a functionality validation, then we need to connect the real uh, OVC, then the inverter, and then the real battery, no? But if we want to simulate those conditions because we are just responsible for the VMS, okay, then we can use a power supply to submit energy to this one. And then we need to simulate the battery. So we use a battery tester, or it could be also a, a PSB, a by directional power supply to get the energy, absorb the, the energy, and maybe to do a regeneration, no, getting that energy back to your need. You can do that. Okay. Take a look at this. The idea of these arrows, no, is that maybe the battery is not just to, to charge that battery. Maybe the battery management system, as I said when we start this conversation, no. The idea of the, your, your vehicle is to submit, to deliver the energy, energy, not just to the vehicle, also to your house. When you return back to to house, uh, to your home, no? Maybe you want the car to deliver the power to, 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 to your refrigerator and those things, no? That's the reason why this one can be tested in both directions, no? To charge the battery or to discharge the battery because this one is gonna be the power supplies of all your, your facility, that that could be done, okay? One more. This is the onboard charger, okay? As I said at, at the beginning, the onboard charger typically, the vehicle can be, can be connected to your AC grid connection, no? So we can use an AC source to simulate, simulate the grid connection, okay? So why do we need to use a, 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 an instrument? Because we want a signal that gets established, well established without noise, no? That's why we use a, an instrument like this one, no? The AC source can deliver the 380 volts, okay? In AC, the onboard charger will do the conversion from AC to DC. And to validate that this one is doing the correct conversion, we connect a platform working as a battery simulator, and we connect, can connect also another device like a oscilloscope to see the voltage, the current, uh, how is the noise created by this one? No, if you want to test inside this this device, we can we can connect the the the, the probes of the oscilloscope inside the device to to, to validate like how it's working for each of the of those steps. No. Okay. When we try to test a battery, please remember that we have like different single batteries, no? We create cells, battery models, and battery packs. 
So if there are like a company trying to do some battery recycling, okay, what they want to test, what they want to do is just to start, they want to discharge all the system. After the system has been discharged, then they can try to separate the models to see if the model is working. If not, they will try to, to, to check each one of, the, of those batteries, but you cannot try to touch them. No, you need to discharge them first just to start to avoid some damages to those, to those batteries. So to, to try to work with them, we need to discharge them. If we want to test them, we need to charge and discharge. Okay, that, that's the idea. Um, in this case, if I want to test like a battery, okay, I can use a, a system or a single item to charge and discharge. That's the idea. Uh, typically, when we try to use those type of devices, uh, we want to automate those process. And you can use Python or LabVIEW. You can use a computer to try to control the conditions of the, of the instrument. No. Uh, and that's the reason why in some of those uh, slides we have seen can Ethernet CAD, no, and some other type of uh, languages or connectors, no, to control those systems, no. And I said you can try to use also oscilloscope or other platforms. So if you are trying to use Lab or Python, no, you can try to control not just one of the other of the devices or the uh, each one that you can control different ones, and you can try to create like a user interface to see like the values that has been taken, and you can analyze and can take some decisions. Yes, on how they are. Okay. Yeah. Those systems are gonna be scalable. Okay. That means that you can start in a single item, and later you can do a parallel connection. Okay to increase your values. The, typically, the idea is to increase the power, but not in serial connection. This is true. The recommendation is in yeah. parallel, OK? That's why we are going to be asking on which are like your goals, which are like the value of the voltage, the power levels, no, to set the correct system. And you can grow up them, no? Um, what what's a, what are going to be the, the type of, of cables? One of the instruments is going to be acting as the master, the other as slaves. One is going to control the others, okay? And we have the ones in yellow as internet cables to control, okay? VNC cables to sync all of them, to synchronize all of them. And the blue and the and the black one is just the connection for the voltage the lanes, no? Uh, well, for the electrical lanes to, to do the connection, okay? If the instrument discover that some of the instrument start failing, the, the, the master will stop the activity of all other devices. So there is no reason to have some failures. The instrument will be testing, it will be doing this system validation just to check that all the system is working correctly. If some of the participants fails, do a failure, the instrument will stop. Okay. Just as an example, so who is using this type of instruments? Uh, you have seen some something there on, on the slides, some pictures, no? both back and forth, and also the companies working on the on the segments of the components in, inside there. No, we have some customers using those platforms in 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 Tesco, in Wildla, no. Uh, Continental, Guadalajara, Querétaro, uh, uh, we have some models uh, as an example, Costa, you know? so some, some examples of companies in Mexico working on this. Also universities, the universities, we have seen that the, the, the educational labs are starting doing electrification labs. If you hear about electrification, it means that it's about mobility, it's about the characterization of batteries, like uh, inverters, chargers, and so on. Okay. And just to, to conclude, no. As I said previously, if we want to recycle a battery, we don't we don't 
we need to discharge a battery. It's not about the, the to separate like each of the modules immediately, no. We need to discharge them to try to reuse them, no. The battery can be expensive. That's the reason why we try to separate that the ones that are still working, the ones that are gonna be still working, we can separate them to try to regroup them and maybe use it in other applications, no. In the other ones that are failing, we are going to dismantle those batteries to try to separate like the, the materials and then to decide how to use that, that type of, of components. Okay, so just try to remember, no? Uh, power supplies, electronic loads, and bidirectional power supplies that can be also regenerative ones. Those are like the types. Think on the, the value of the voltage current that you need, the power to decide like which are the type of, of instruments. Uh, it's not just about the high power systems. There are going to be simple systems just to test the, the small battery that we have, like working up to 20 volts, 6 amps. You no, know? there are 20 watts. You no, know? it's not just about kilowatts. So but this is the, one of the trends from this AC to DC uh, movement. You no. Know? On this part of the of the electrification, okay. So when we try to describe like the main applications there, why one gap? Because it's this capability to do a fast charging system, no, with using new material materials, no, silicon carbide, using wideband gap devices, no, the power management to improve the the power in your device. How, how is the current that is consuming? No, it's not just in a functional. Uh, activity also in a standby mode. So typically there we are going to be using the oscilloscopes, uh, more drivers, inverters. They can, it doesn't need to be an electrical one to test how efficient it is. What I have seen locally is companies working on electronic parts for drugs. No, they are also working on efficiency. So years ago, we used another type of lighting. Today we are using LEDs. And the idea is to consume less energy. Also, if the vehicle is uh, a gas, we still need to use uh, the less as possible. Then the system needs to be more efficient. No? And as I said, no, the, the, the batteries. So there are like different areas where electronics can reach in time domain and frequency domain, in DC for to measure like the components temperature in, and also in power with EA. Okay. So, when we are using, for example, oscilloscope, you, you can see also that there are some new tools that can reach up to eight channels. The reason for that is, as an example, no? if you want to test a motor driver system, maybe on the entrance of that driver in the input, it's going to be a DC signal. But in the outside, when, when you're trying to get connected to the motor, no, uh, the connection is going to be a three phase with a PWM uh, control, no. So if you want to test power efficiency on the input, it's one phase. On the output, it's going to be three phases. So you need to connect voltage and current on each of those uh, phases. That means that you need eight connections, that's the reason why we have eight channels. And if you want to connect a multiple phase system, you need to use like differential high voltage groups, also current groups. No? If you want to characterize components, you need to use this type of instrument to, to characterize the, the, the transistor, the diode, or some others. But if you want to test like the complete system, as the one that I mentioned previously, no, the EA can, can get there, no. So thank you. I, I just want to open a, a, a time to answer any question. If you have any question, please let me know. But I have a question. Can I simulate dynamic load conditions in this device? Yes. It's not just like a simple configuration. You can set like uh, the curves of the devices. No, for example, you want to simulate a, a, a lighting system or the panel, the solar panel 
follow the battery in different types of conditions, you can do that. So yes, the electronic load or the power supply is not going to be active in a single configuration. You can create like uh, complex systems for that. Yeah. Is there any other question? So I just want to thank you for this invitation. So whatever you need, uh, there is my email. So I'm going to be there ready uh, to help you. Okay, so thank you.